do not know. This is Ryan Guinness. He's been a successful speaker and trainer online at MLM. Uh, Cool. Ramon, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thanks Thanks for the intro. How's everybody doing? Happy Saturday. <laughs> cool, cool. Awesome. So, yeah, we're going to kind of jump into it here. And before we do that, I wanted to, uh, to, to find out. Uh, I, I put out some homework assignment the last time we chat where I encourage everyone to pick up the phone and make some some calls go through some of their contacts start uh, reaching out to some people has, has anybody did that if you did that you know put it in the chat and let me know how that experience experience was okay and uh, you know that would be cool to, to see that all right um, so if, if you missed the first video I invite you to go back and check out the first video so just kind of a quick recap you know I touched uh, on I was a barber and then I got introduced to network marketing and uh, that's uh, that's you know was thank thankfully for this guy here that really changed my life you know so sometimes people say you know I can't talk to my barber or I can't talk to certain people and uh, that's not the case you know everybody is looking for, for bigger and better and uh, that's our job is to go out there and do that all right so the challenge that uh, people face in, in, uh, in, in network marketing and business in general is uh, getting eyeballs on the presentation. So our job is very simple, is to get a lot of eyeballs. I'll, I'll use this little fancy thing right here. A lot of eyeballs on the presentation, okay, and that will turn into good stuff. So the inviting stage that I had covered with you guys uh, was all about uh, you know, talking to people and getting them to, you know, inviting them to take a look at your presentation. And once someone looks at your presentation, now we move into the kind of the follow-up stage where sometimes people say things like, well, I'm, I'm not really good at closing, or they, they think, oh, man, i got to close someone, and they get even bent out of shape. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I want you to... to to, to maybe get rid of some of the negative association words, you know. So sometimes, if closing doesn't sit right with you, you know, don't don't use that word. You know, use more of what I like. To, I like to use follow up. I like to use. I just want to touch base. I want to see if you have any questions. For me, that works better. It feels better for me. So you know, if you have any words that you feel like, uh, see what you can replace that word with. So I don't really you know, talk about closing, I talk more about follow-up. And uh, when someone, when you invite someone to take a look at your your, your presentation, uh, there's a few different ways that they can see that. You know, you could send them a link to a website, right? You can sit down with them and, you know, do a little presentation. You can have a conversation over the phone. You can invite them to a webinar, a conference call, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But ultimately, the person is going to be looking at some kind of presentation, okay? And after they look at that presentation, it's natural for them to maybe have some questions, maybe be able to share you what they, you know, share what they thought about it. So it's okay to just go ahead and ask them. Just keep it real simple, you know. Someone you invite someone to, you know, check out a, a little video presentation that you have. Then, uh, you know, they, they, there's I like to set up the follow up before they actually look at the presentation. So, perfect example, and I'll just kind of, uh, you know, play it out in real life. So, let's say I, you know, called up my buddy John, and I, you know, and, and, I'll, and I'll play like what I did the last time. Let's say it was somebody, John was somebody that, I, you know, is a contact of mine. I haven't talked to him in a long time since, let's say, high school. And I'm going through some of my contacts, and I call John up, and I get his voicemail. I say, "Hey, John, this is Ryan Gunness. I don't know if you even remember me. <laughs> it's way back, uh, back in high school. I'm kind of going through some of my my contacts here, and I I, I thought about you, and I uh, just would love to kind of catch up and see if you're still in New York or what's going on with you." I left him a voicemail. John calls me back, and uh, I do a quick, quick catch up. Not I'm not turning it into a long call. 
you know, quick catch up. Hey, what you going? Are you still in New York? He says, I'm still in New York. I said, cool. I said, hey, listen, you know, I don't have a lot of time to catch up fully. I'd love to catch up with you some more. But the reason that I was calling you is I'm expanding my business. And, uh, you know, New York is a great market for us. And I just kind of wanted to see if you might be open to taking a look at any good opportunities. Okay. Uh, if you are, this is something that shouldn't affect what you're doing full time. And I can send you out some information for you to check it out. John says, yeah, cool, yeah, I'll check it out. All right, so that's where I, uh, I, I get his email address. And let's say I'm sending him a link to a video online. So John gives me his email address. And I confirm that. You want to make sure if, you, if you're getting someone's information, you want to make sure you get it properly, especially, especially email addresses, because you can mess that up, and then he never gets the email. So I get his email address. And then I say, hey, John, the, the, uh, the, the link that I'm sending you is going to take you to a video. Okay, that video is about 10 minutes. If I was to send that to you right now, when do you think you'll have a chance to take a look at it? So John has to think, and he says, uh, I could look at it later on tonight. I could look at it tomorrow. You know, so let's say he says, I could look at it tomorrow. All right, and I'm going to play with, with real time here. So today is Saturday. He says he could look at it tomorrow. Um, so I say, hey, John, so if, if we touch back uh, sometime on Monday, would you have looked at it for sure? He says, uh, yeah. I said, okay, cool. Let's set up a time to get back on the phone for a few minutes on Monday. And, um, you know, I mean, if there's no interest at all, just send me back an email so we don't have to, to waste the appointment. And he said, yeah, that's cool. And I said, what's a good time? And he tells me, you know, let's say he tells me 1 o'clock. And I said, okay, let me check my calendar. And I see that's 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 good. I say, okay, cool. So we're on for a firm appointment, one o'clock on Monday. All right. That uh, those elements that I just kind of covered there, uh, I invite you to do that because I see a lot of people uh, when they do get people to say, I'll take a look at what you have. They do a poor job setting it up, and what happens is now uh, they never get a chance to, to really follow up with that person and find out if they looked at it and their opinion and all that stuff. And also, there's if you don't put a sense of urgency or you don't put an appointment for a follow-up, then there's no sense of urgency for the prospect to follow through. But because John has an appointment with me on, on Monday at 1 o'clock, uh, he's more likely to review what I'm going to send him so that we can have a conversation on Monday or he can shoot me a quick email or text saying, hey, you know, this is not my cup of tea. Make sense? So that's how you set up a proper appointment, which leads right into the follow-up. So now, uh, John, I get on the phone with him on Monday and, uh, and, I, and I say, hey, you know, I, you know, did you get a chance to check out everything? He says, yes. I say, cool. You know, and I keep it simple. So, you know, what's your thoughts? You know, did anything jump out of you? You know, so any question like that that's comfortable for you, you can ask. You know, some people like to say, what do you like best? You know, um, but any variation of that. So I like to say, hey, you know, did anything stand out? Did anything jump out for you? You know, what was your, what was your thoughts about that? I like to be kind of open-ended with that and I let John tell me. John might say, you know, uh, that looks pretty interesting. This, I mean, it looks like people can make money with this. Looks, you know, looks pretty exciting. He'll t he'll tell me, okay. And uh, then he might have some questions. He might ask, you know, so how does the money work? You know, how does you know how does this whole thing work? Is there a team? Is there a company? He might have questions around that. And those questions, then after he asks me a few questions, I might say, hey, got a good suggestion. And now this is where you point them to a resource okay so they watch the video okay and in the follow-up you want to point them to a resource so this is where I'm gonna invite him to come to a team webinar I'm gonna invite him to any you know uh, maybe there's sometimes there's presentations that go on to the week conference calls maybe there's another video that goes into more details of what he was asking about let's say it was a compensation plan you know and I'm gonna invite him to to one of those resources that uh, can give him more information as he's uh, processing everything. Okay, and keep it very, very simple. So the same way. So let's say, you know, I say, cool, I got a suggestion. We got a we got a team call tonight. It's really for people that's in the business already, 
but I, I can kind of sneak you on the call and you can kind of get to see what's going on behind the scenes. And um, it's around 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, you, you know, is that something that you can make if I were to get you onto that call? John says, yeah, I can make it. I said, cool. And I give him the information. And I said, well, let's, let's do this. The, the call is uh, 30 minutes. Um, I'll just put a, a note to, to give you a call. You call me right after the, the call, and we, we can chat some more. He says, cool. So boom. So now you know, John can go make it onto that call, and we're going to talk right after that call. So I'm always moving, moving to the next level. So now John gets onto the call. You know, we have a little conversation afterwards. He's like, "Wow, the team is, you know, everybody seems really excited over there. Everything looks pretty cool." And um, at that point, John might say, "You know, I, I think I, I want to do this." So then I could walk him through signing up at that point. Maybe he's not ready yet. You know, maybe he's like, "You know, I gotta, you know." You know, he needs some more information. Maybe he's telling me, I got questions about this, this, and this. And then I say, hey, you know what? Um, let, let's connect back tomorrow. Let's set up a time. You know, I want to introduce you to, you know, to one of the people that I'm working with. So maybe this is a time for a three-way call. You know, and you could do a three-way call. So you, you want to know all the tools in follow-up. So uh, you, and you, you should really, you know, have that on a page or have that written down somewhere where you know all the schedule of all the webinars, the conference calls, the team calls. So even like this training that's going on here, uh, for certain prospects, this might be um, a good place to even invite them to say, hey, you know, we have lots of different trainers and, and help, help support the team. You know, it's really for people that's already in the business, but you know, I might be able to sneak you on on one of those calls and you could check it out so you could see you know, the big picture of what we have. And uh, believe it or not, sometimes those resources can make a difference in someone saying, you know what, I'm ready, let's, let's do this. Does that make sense? Any questions on that before, before I kind of continue here? If you have any questions, go ahead and put it in there. Ramon, if you want to chime in, that's cool too as well. Um, so let's see here. So now that whole process of following up is that's all you're, you're really, really doing. Sometimes people feel like, uh, you know, someone just looked at the presentation and they, you know, if they don't join right away, it's like, oh, they, you know, they're not interested. And that's not true. And if you really think about it for yourself, um, I would bet when, when you first saw the presentation to join, you know, most people don't join right off the, right off the bat. They got questions, they want to check out things, they want to go back on the website, they want to see things a little bit, uh, and they join. You know, the, you know, so most people don't just look at a presentation and join right off the bat. So don't expect your prospects to do the same thing. <laughs> okay? Yeah, so, so that's why you want to make sure you have all these tools that you can point people to. So after they check out your presentation, if they're showing some interest, say, hey, you know, I have a suggestion. Let me introduce you to someone here. Let me see if I can get them on the phone. I have a suggestion. We got a call this Saturday. You know, I have a suggestion. We got a little webinar. I have a suggestion. There's a, a YouTube video by one of the team leaders that kind of breaks down the compensation plan. Let me let me send that to you. Okay, and you should be pointing them to some other uh, tool or presentation to help expand the conversation, and that. Uh, resource that you send them doesn't have to be another sales pitch. It could be just, hey, we got a video of, you know, uh, of the uh, uh, of a team training. Them that there's the support there and everything. So you could keep that real, real simple. Now, what will happen is at some point people will say something like, you know, this is cool. You know, so what? What's my, what's my next step? Uh, you know, that's my favorite words when prospects say stuff like that. They say, hey, uh, you know, what's, what's my next step? Oh, and typically when they say stuff like that, they're basically saying, you know, I'm ready to join. Tell me what I have. <laughs> you know, so someone says, you know, this is cool. You know, so what's, what's my step, next step? I say, pretty simple. You know, I can, uh, I can send you a link or you have the link in your email and you can click on the join page and that will walk you through, uh, you know, creating an account and everything. And then once you come into the back office, go through some of the training, 
and uh, we'll we'll uh, set up a time to get back on the phone again, and we'll uh, put together what I call the um, the game the game plan to help them get eyeballs on the presentation, because that's all we're doing: eyeballs on the presentation. You know, answer some questions, get you know, do some follow up, get them in front of some more presentations and stuff like that. Then the people that want to join, they go ahead and join. You make some money. Everybody's happy, okay? And then you show them how to get eyeballs on the presentation. You're just doing the same thing over and over again, okay? And uh, in reality, I could say with certainty that this process here, if you never learned nothing else, this is all you need skill-wise to build a large network marketing business, okay? And uh, doesn't mean that you couldn't benefit from other skills. You can benefit from okay, but if you never learned nothing else, if you just became a master of getting eyeballs on your presentation every single day, and then you followed up with all those people, you know, answer questions, get them in front of more information, okay, you'll get a percentage of people to join, and then if you work with those people and show them how to do the same thing, man, you could build a huge business. <laughs> it's that easy, okay? Um, let me see if I see any questions here. Da, 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 da. Nope, that don't see any questions. I've, I've, said that, uh, I've said that uh, process uh, uh, before where, you know, as, as an entrepreneur, you, when you're inviting someone and you learn the process and you invited and they actually signed up, all you have to do is teach them exactly what you've done in a sense. This is what this is here. You teach them how you were able to go ahead and, and uh, get that person to sign up and, and whether they... You used our capture page system or our webinar system, the one we, you know, with PLS. That's how you're going to benefit from this program, for the program plan world team build. You, you create a capture page with that, have the first name, last name, email, and phone number. That'll get them to see the, obviously, when you, with the video you add there, the one with the product, the one with the compensation plan, which we'll be uh, building soon. But you can use the product one to, 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 to gravitate, to get their, their attention. Show them that video. If they fill out the form, like Ryan said, this is where you're going to communicate with the individuals. You can then send them somewhere else, maybe another page that you created, maybe some more information or the recorded webinars. Uh, let them know that they, you know, that we have professional train on here as well. You can send them to these videos as well once we have them up, up, uploaded. And then eventually what's going to happen if you build a relationship with these individuals, it's a possibility they're going to buy because they're getting the support they need. They're getting the guidance that they need. And all you have to do is tell them to re repeat the process. This is when you start creating webinars with these individuals. Maybe you find the one that you know, has the most drive. Become a partner and a friend with this individual. That's what I've done with Sam Warren. Me and him have been working together for years now. Uh, that's, that's how you build relationships with individuals long term. So uh, it's a great process. And again, great stuff, Ryan. Cool. Thank you. You know, so... You know, it's really, really that simple. And I, and I hate to be kind of redundant with the whole process, but it's really that simple. You know, I, I used to say to, to, to a lot of people that I, I recruited, you know, I really wish, and sometimes I would say this to prospects before they join. I would say, you know, I really wish that this was more complicated because then I could justify that you could actually make real big money here. You know, like sometimes I feel, uh, you know, like, it should be more complicated because you can make a fortune, you know, with this simple process. But you do have to understand the processes well so that you you, you can be intentional with the whole thing. All right. And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, this is where, you know, people fail. You know, they, they struggle to get eyeballs on the presentation. So, so game, is, game is over early. You know, I, I, you know, this process here, I even teach this process in completely cold market with people that you don't know, okay? And it works, okay? There's, it's, it's still a lot of numbers you have to go through. It works. So if you're doing this process with people that you have somewhat of a relationship with, okay, uh, it'll work better because that's the only thing that's working against you is if you don't have a strong relationship with the prospect, then there is a chance that they may not necessarily uh, be so motivated to take you seriously. Okay, and that's where some of these skills that I talked about as far as being, uh, you know, setting the appointment and, and being real um, intentional with the next step comes into play. 
But if you're dealing with somebody that you have a good relationship with, you don't even have to be that skilled because you, you're, you're falling back on the fact that you have a relationship with them. All right, so let me see here. You know, so like, yeah, even with the uh, network marketers, I teach, you know, all the different types of network marketers. Now, there is uh, other strategies for generating leads. And I'll just kind of give you a 30,000 foot view of it. And because um, I know a lot of times people say, well, how do I find people to talk to? And it's always, you know, they always come back to that. And there's so many little things that you can do. So like even one of the things that we teach is uh, there's there's like a sign that can go on your back in the car of your car that could generate leads. There's these things called drop cards that look like a little hundred dollar bill that you can leave around town wherever you go, and it entices someone to call to listen to a message, and it captures that lead for you, and it takes them to look at your presentation. So there's things that you could do, and I only touch on this here to let you know that there is. Uh, a life outside of the people that you know but the people that you know is the place to start so I'm talking to the person right now that you know has not really put an intention to go through all the contacts that they know and most people I find either they haven't done that proficient enough or they um, they haven't done it at all so I want you to start there because that's where, you know, that's where you're going to get the most practice, okay? And you can get everything ironed out well before you start moving into, you know, other marketing strategies, which I think as you're growing your business, you're going to want to do that. You, you want to be able to generate leads from other sources other than just the people that you know. And the people that you know and your, your contacts would just be something that was going to happen. It's going to happen naturally as you continue to grow your business. But in the initial stage, if you're starting from ground zero, uh, I, I think that the low hanging fruit is all the contacts that you know, or they know you, or you have something in common. Like I mentioned on the last call, if you, you know, if you, uh, if your, your kids is in soccer and you have a list of all the other soccer parents, and even though you never, you, you haven't met them before, it doesn't, you know, it, you can still reach out to that person and say, hey, I uh, just want to introduce myself. You know, our kids go to the same, you know, soccer club. And, um, you know, I'm reaching out to some of the, the soccer parents because I'm expanding my business. And I love, I just love the soccer parents. You know, they're cheering for the kids or something that you can compliment them on. Okay. And I wanted to find out if you might be open to taking any look, uh, look at any good opportunities. So you'll figure out those things along the way if you're willing to say, hey, I'm going to pick up the phone and start contacting people, and I, I want to figure out, because if I'm not willing to figure out the inviting stage, then, you know, it, it's game over. All right? Let's see here. Uh, I don't see any questions there. Um, if there's, Ramon, if you have any, any questions or you, anything else you want me to chime on this particular stage, uh, that's, you know, I, I'll, I'm happy to take that. Yeah. And... Okay, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, and uh, I mean, yeah, I'm happy to take any questions or anything that you want to chime in for, for or not because it's really that simple, you know? Yeah, I, I would, uh, what I would say is when an individual captures someone, um, you know, say that somebody fill out the, the capture page and they, you know, they either got their phone number or what if they didn't get their phone number? What's the step for them? You know, obviously, you know, they have to communicate somehow. So emailing is obviously the only option at that point. Now, I mean, what's your strategy? Let's say they collected, give us a strategy with email, or give us a strategy with, actually give us a strategy with phone because I think everybody pretty much knows the email process. Can you give us that strategy? If someone uh, just signs up somebody, capture their phone number, what is the first call? How do you, what to say exactly to this individual? Cool. So let's say you have a capture page and it's name, email, and phone, right? Okay. Someone, someone fills out this page, right? Typically, after they fill out the page, they they get redirected to the, the thank you page, which might have a video and have a little presentation that uh, that's congruent with what they just opted into. Correct. Um, at that point, you also you get an email letting you know that you have a new. 
prospect, right? Okay, and that person, you know, I, I'm not the best drawer here, <laughs> but you have a prospect. Okay, now you're going to pick up the phone and call this person. And I like to, to the, the first initial call, if it's somebody that, you know, that, that filled out a form, they came from some type of source that I don't know them, again, even like the, the soccer list, I like to say, I, I just want to kind of introduce myself. So if I call that person, let's say this was Fred, okay? Well, I will call Fred, let's say he opted in, and I would say, hey, Fred, this is Ryan Gunnis. Uh, you, know, um, you, you know, you opted in to learn about, you know, my system, and I just kind of wanted to, you know, touch base with you and introduce myself just in case you might have any questions while you're going through everything. Okay, and that might be a voicemail or that might be me catching him live. Okay, uh, sometimes at that point, uh, Fred doesn't say you really have any questions at this point. You know, so you have to feel him out at that point. Sometimes Fred might say, oh, this is pretty interesting, you know, how does this work, how does this work? And, uh, you, you, you know, you run with that. Now, let's say Fred, I'm going to give him both scenarios. Let's say Fred um, doesn't really give you much feedback, you know, okay, thanks for calling, you know, and he's not really giving you any questions or anything. Uh, at that point, I, I would, I can ask him, hey, based on what you've seen so far, you know, is this something that you, you think you want to explore some more? So it's a very simple question to ask someone. Uh, you could put that into your own words. So that question is basically, you know, you're trying to find out, you know, where that person's at. If they're not giving you any information, just ask them, hey, you know, based on what you've seen so far, is this something that you think you want, you, you know, you, you want to explore some more? You want to check out some more? Is this something that you, you, you know, you, that, that you, you want some more information about? Okay, so you can ask that question, and then they'll tell you, you know, they'll tell you, you know, yeah, you know, uh, I need to check out the presentation again, because sometimes they don't see the whole thing. So sometimes just calling them is to remind them to go check out the whole presentation. Okay, and uh, and that phone call makes a big difference for doing that. And then after they, they check out that presentation, that's where we're back to the stage here of the follow-up. So again, our job is to get eyeballs on the presentation and help them get through the whole presentation because sometimes what happens, somebody opts in off your page, you got them as a lead, they land on the presentation, and they only caught one or two minutes. They didn't catch the whole thing. And uh, if you have an email follow-up system going out, they might be getting drip messages. And, you know, they may or may not pay attention to those. But if you pick up the phone and give them a phone call, you just boost the chance of them looking at some of those emails. And those emails bring them back to the presentation. Because they are more likely to, to pay more attention knowing there's a real person involved. If you opt in off of a page, and we've all, all done this, you opt in off of a page, um, you don't have any real sense of urgency to, to check out everything all the time because you're like, oh, you know, there's, there's nobody involved with this here. But if there's a real person that you talked to on the phone or they left you a message or something, uh, n then in the brain you're like, hmm, you know, if there was something that was interesting there for you, you're more likely to pay attention again going forward. Make sense? Um, I, I know you, you said skip the email side. I'll, I'll cover the email side just in case. Let's say you had a, a form that did not have a phone number on it, you know, or the person put in a bad phone number. You call it and you get this number is disconnected or, you know, it, 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 you, know you got a fast busy or whatever it is. Then I would shoot them an email, okay? Shoot them an email introducing yourself. Hey, you know, Fred, just wanted to touch base, you know, um, introduce myself in case you have any questions, uh, and, um, you know, here's my phone number, and, you know, shoot me back your phone number if you, if you want to set up a time to chat. So anything of that nature. Again, I want you to, to use your own personality because people feel, you know, a lot of times people say, can I get all the scripts, can I get everything for this? And... Yes, we have resources for that, but 
at this stage, if you if you're getting started with your business, I want you to take the time and do some thinking and, and figure this out and be okay with it not being perfect. That is going to build some muscle. My whole goal, you know, for this training and for everybody that's listening, is that you build some muscle around inviting, okay, and follow up, okay. Be be okay with with, with being sloppy. And once you build some muscle, then a lot of the other stuff that I have as far as with, you know, cold market training and all that stuff, you will be more prepared. Because I see a lot of people come in and they're, they're always looking for the shortcut. And uh, without, if you have no muscle uh, and you get a, a shortcut strategy, a lot of times it will backfire in your face. Because we have systems that set up and bring leads to people and all on autopilot. And then what happens is the person is right about this stage here. They're getting all these automatic emails. It's all exciting and everything. They are right at this stage here where they're ready to join. And what happens is the prospect calls the sponsor and uh, has a conversation. And this person sounds like they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> and then what that prospect does is they go online and they go find another sponsor. And uh, you you were paying for traffic, or you're driving traffic. You have all the sophisticated funnels that's you know finding prospects and presenting and following up for you. But the quality prospects are going to want to talk to somebody at some point. Quality prospects. There are going to be some prospects that do things automatically, okay? But the quality prospects are going to want to talk to you. And if you don't match the rest of the marketing, they're going to say, "I'm going to find somebody else." And uh, all the money and everything that you spent and all the resources that you have would will not be as efficient. Anything else there? No? Great, great point right there. Uh, you have a do you do have a question from but from Kathy if you want to answer that. Cool. Uh, is it wise to give them your Facebook account link in the email? Also, is that not a good thing to? No, I think that's that's cool. I think that's fine, you know. So in in that email message, when you uh you know you include your contact information, and you could say, hey, here's you know here's my Facebook page too, if if you want to connect with me over there, you know, um, and you can you can include that. So you know sometimes people they want to see what you look like, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> and <laughs> you know, and again, some people will resonate with you, and some wouldn't. But it's okay. If you're doing this and you have a lot of eyeballs, they're going to be a percentage of people that resonate with you. You know, your job is not to, uh, you know, necessarily close or get people to do something that they don't want. Your job is to do so much activity that the people that resonate with the opportunity, that resonate with the whole structure and everything, the follow-up and everything, and resonate with you, those are the people that you attract in your life. Ooh. And you can show them how to do the same thing. But this is not going to happen if you're only talking to one person. <laughs> it's not going to happen if you're talking to two people, you know, if you're really trying to build a business. Okay? It's not going to happen if you talk to three people. Okay? It's going to happen if you're doing a lot of activity. Okay? And, uh, and that's, that's what I'm trying to drill in. So, you know, if you're looking for the magic formula that every person that you talk to, you sign up, wrong training. <laughs> this training is about do a lot of activity, get eyeballs on your presentation, do some a little bit of simple follow-up, okay? Uh, just be, you know, continuing to work on yourself, okay? And a percentage of people are going to be attracted to you. You're going to gain some skill. You're going to make some money. And then you repeat the process over and over again. <laughs> That's what this is about. Correct. And if you do add your Facebook information or your, your profile account for one of your social media accounts, make sure that they, they can actually see you and you look professional. Uh, like, he, like Ryan just said, if you don't know how to speak it, they're going to run away. And they'll sign up with someone else. If you don't look the part, they're going to go sign up with someone else. It's that simple. If you don't know the product, this is why I mean this is benef this is extremely beneficial to, to, to get this drilled into your brain and then pass it on to your uh, teammates because this is a very powerful presentation I mean training here 
And they all need to know this because if they do and they understand it and they live it, they're going to see a lot of changes in their income. You're going to see a lot of changes on even practicing this. Like, like Ryan said, you don't need to master it day one. I mean, over time, over time, you're going to perfect this method. So, I mean, great, great stuff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the only th uh, thing I'll, I'll add on top of that is um, don't feel like you necessarily, when it comes to looking professional, doesn't doesn't mean that you necessarily have to go out there and put on a suit and tie, you know, or your fancy dress or anything like that. Um, it just just a clear, you know, nice clear pictures, you know, that you know some people have these uh, pictures like this guy over here. You can barely see his face. <laughs> okay, uh, you, you want to make sure you have a nice clear picture. That's all. You know, you know, comfortable. Whatever you feel comfortable that represents you. You know, if you're not a, a suit and tie person, don't put on a suit and tie. You know, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can be yourself. Again. Uh, there is going to be a percentage of people that resonate with you, and that's your job is to get so much activity going on that you're attracting those people, and the people that resonate with you are going to be the people that more likely will follow your lead and say, "Cool, let's do this. Let's go get eyeballs on the presentation. Let's repeat this process." Those are the people that you're that you that you're going to want to uh, work with, and the, the stuff that you're doing, they're going to resonate with more. All right, um, Kathy, how? You know, you have to get out of your comfort zone. Just do it. Absolutely. You know, um, the best strategy that I have for getting out the comfort zone is to do a little blitz. You know, um, when and it doesn't. You know, a lot of times in the, in this industry we hear the ninety day blitz. I would say, you know, maybe a five day or a ten day blitz where you you say, you know what, for the next five days. I'm contacting at least 20, 25 people a day. Okay, and if you, if you, if you just, because sometimes it's easy for you to say, you know what, I could do five days. Okay, and that's how it started off for me. And once you got past that, then you can see, you know, what, I'm doing another five days. So if you've never done any type of uh, major prospecting activity, then I invite you to do a five-day blitz where I am contacting 25, 30 people a day for the next five days straight. Okay, uh, I'm contacting 200 people in five days. Do something that's a stretch for you. Okay, um, now in today's world, if you told me if I'm doing a blitz, you know, uh, 25 people is too little <laughs> in a day for me. But when I first started off, uh, 25 people sounded like a lot. So do something that sounds crazy and, and, and do that number and just commit to it and just say, I don't care if I get a sign up or not. Uh, all I'm caring about is that I'm going to be working on getting people to look at the presentation, invite them to the presentation. I'm going to figure out what I need to, to say to make that happen. Okay, I, the people that make it through it, I'm going to stumble and fumble and figure out how to, you know, invite them to the rest of the resources. And I'm going to work on this process, and you know, hopefully I get better. <laughs> if you just take that attitude at all, that's going to, you know, serve you very well. Cool, cool. Um. Yeah, so with the uh, the forty minute mark here, so I don't know if uh, if, if we want to just chime in for a lot of questions or where you want to go with this. I mean, yeah, if they, if they have any, uh, Kathy said, great training, Ryan. Thank you so much. Thank you. I won't bring Ryan on board for training. Truly helps, and motivates us. Practice makes perfect. So awesome, awesome. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the recording, and then we can go into. If anyone has any questions they want to ask, let us know. If you want the microphone, give us some feedback. That'll be great as well.